Zombies. Gory. Bloody. Terrifying. Fascinating. Media glorification has inserted zombification into popular culture, even sparking individuals to prepare for zombie apocalypses. But where did this idea of the dead walking amongst the living come from? The word zombie originates from Haiti, where the fear of becoming a zombie is so real that families will guard the recently buried dead from zombification by the boko, or the Haitian voodoo sorcerer. The boko is known to practice both dark and light magic, but it is his ability to create zombies that instill such a fear in Haiti that a national law was passed in 1864 prohibiting the creation of zombies. These Haitian zombies have been documented and studied. One of the most well-known victims was Clairvius Narcisse from Haiti, born 1922, turned zombie slave 1962, and was saved two years later, eventually returning to his family. Wade Davis, a Harvard ethnobotanist, published a chemical hypothesis to explain the Boko's magic. Let's explore this chemical hypothesis by following Clairvius's journey from human to zombie. Part 1. Death in rural Haitian folklore, the Boko can create zombies by capturing his soul in a bottle, leaving behind his corpse. It is hypothesized that the Boko actually poisons his victim using a magic potion containing the neurotoxin, tetrodotoxin, or TTX. The poison is naturally produced by pufferfish, newts, blue-ringed octopus, and some bacteria. It can be taken in by ingestion, injection, inhalation, and in the case of Clarvius, through abraded skin. How does TTX work? Here is a neuron found in the heart, and it helps tell the heart that it needs to beat. Sodium can flow into the neuron through a channel, which creates an action potential signal that travels down the nerve and tells the myocytes, or the heart muscle, to contract. This creates the heart contraction, or a beat. TTX binds to the sodium channels located in the heart, and it doesn't let sodium flow into the neuron and decreases the firing of action potentials. This results in a much lower heart rate. Other voluntary muscles are also slowed down, such as the diaphragm, by the same mechanism. This results in the dramatic decrease of all metabolic functions in the person until they seem like they're dead. Indeed, on May 2nd, 1962, when Clairvius was in a neurotoxin-induced coma, he was verified to be dead by two American doctors and his family buried him alive. Part 2. Reawakening Haitian folklore believe that after the family has buried the victim, the boko will return to the grave, open it, and pass the bottle containing the victim's soul under his nose, reviving his victim and leading the zombie away to become his slave. In the case of Clairvius, the boko dug him back up and he was given a paste containing deterostromonium, which wakes him up and has hallucinogenic effects and causes memory loss. Clairvius was given regular doses of detera and he was forced to work in a sugar plantation as a zombie slave. How does Deterra work? Deterra also known as the zombie cucumber, is a poisonous weed that contains the tropine alkaloids, atropine and scopolamine. Both of these chemicals slow down the parasympathetic nervous system, which regulates your body during rest. Usually, parasympathetic neurons from the brain send acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter, to the cells to tell them that it's time to rest. Acetylcholine can bind to the targeted cells through receptors. Once it is bound, a signal or message inside of the cell is created. Both atropine and scopolamine are antagonists of a specific class of acetylcholine receptors called the muscarinic cholinergic receptors. This means that acetylcholine can't bind to the receptor because it is blocked by atropine or scopolamine. This results in a decreased response by the body to acetylcholine. For example, the vagus nerve helps keep the heart rate low during rest, but if the heart cells can't get the acetylcholine signal because atropine or scopolamine is blocking the receptor, then the heart rate will increase. Other symptoms of the parasympathetic nervous system include dilated pupils and reduced salivation and secretion. Aside from the parasympathetic nervous system, the central nervous system is also affected. Scopolamine can affect the CNS due to its ability to cross the blood-brain barrier. When it enters the brain, it depresses the CNS by the same antagonistic mechanism. This results in amnesia, fatigue, and hallucinations. The boko resuscitates the victim using a paste containing these alkaloid chemicals. The victim's heart rate increases, kicking them out of their coma-like state. And the amnesia and hallucinations keep the newly created zombie slave submissive and obedient. Part 3. Side Effects and Recovery When Clairvius' sugar plantation master passed away, he stopped receiving doses of Jatura. He slowly gained his sanity and returned to his family. Usually, the victims are not so fortunate. Even the ones who are saved suffer from brain damage from low oxygen levels when they were buried alive and other mental problems from the extensive drug administration. 
These Haitian zombies inspired a culture of zombie fanatics, but notice that the Haitian zombies are unlike zombies that the media portrays. They are not actually dead, they are not aggressive, and they do not have an appetite for human flesh. So yes, zombification was a problem in Haiti, with thousands of cases emerging every year. Even the United Nations was concerned, declaring it a problem comparable to HIV and AIDS. Since then, researchers all over the world are seeking to uncover the science behind the magic. The chemistry hypothesis presented here was initially met with controversy, but since has gained support with more clinical studies of TTX and Datura. Still other sources believe that zombification is not due to voodoo magic or even chemistry, but just people with undiagnosed mental illnesses, mistaken identity, or abduction. But that is for you to decide. What do you believe? <laughs>